Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly, email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we're discussing a 75-piece limited edition from the 2008 model year. This is the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore Porto Servo. It is a special series for the Northern Sardinia retailer of Audemars Piguet at the time. And the watch is 42 millimeters in diameter in stainless steel with a lovely Mediterranean blue dial and a strap to match. So 42 millimeters is the diameter, 14.4 millimeters is the thickness. The watch case is 53.9 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip. And if we include these little plots or intermediate end links, the total distance across the wrist is 58 millimeters. Now the watch wears well on my wrist of 16 centimeters circumference, but you're not gonna be able to fit it on a wrist much smaller than this. I've come to feel that the 42 millimeter offshores wear like 44 millimeter round watches, and the 42 feels like the limit for me. I think if your wrist is any smaller, you're gonna want a smaller Royal Oak, something that's not an offshore. And this watch is probably at its wrist limit right here. You can see how from the top in particular, the lugs push right out to the edge. So if your wrist is my size, and I'll zoom out so you can see, it does wear well. But if your wrist is my size, you're fine. If it's smaller, I would probably advise you to look for something more compact. The watch has a lovely construction. As with all Royal Oaks, a big part of what you pay for is the pleasure of having the fine finish on the outside of the watch. And it does take quite a bit of skill and time to create these razor sharp bevels, especially the breaks between the satin and the bevels. You can see how beautiful that contrast between polish and brushed steel is, and it continues everywhere, right down to micro beveling. You can see on the edge of the crown and shear guards. This is a gorgeous watch. The watch is fixed to its strap using screws and bars, which is what I like to see. That's the more expensive way to build a watch, but it's also more secure. And on a large and heavy sports watch like this, you want that. There is a perfect integration of case into lugs into strap. So while it's not on a bracelet, there is a flow between the lines of the case and the lines of the strap. It's not designed to be a jarring break, even though there is a materials contrast. Here we have a hornback alligator leather strap. It's a particular cut that AP often uses on the offshores. It is a thick piece of leather. You can see it's a sort of Mediterranean blue, a bit lighter than navy blue. We've got a contrasting white stitch. It is very thick, and you can see it's sheer cut on its flank, showing you the layers of leather on its underside. You can see that it is black calfskin, and we have a AP logo style single fold steel deployment clasp. You can see Audemars Piguet on the outside, and then AP doubled up on the inside. Rolling around to the case, I should mention it is a screw down crown watch with a solid case back. So if you were to put this watch on a water resistant strap, you'll have a million options from AP as well as the aftermarket. This is a watch you can take swimming. Again, screw down crown, 100 meters water resistant. You have this lovely metal work on the case, a fully expressed bezel gasket. It's a little hairline visual signature on the original Royal Oak, but on the offshore, it's much more visible as the timepiece has a relentlessly technical aesthetic and bringing some elements like the ceiling components that assure water tightness from the inside to the outside gives this watch a more technical, robust, burly, and adventurous look. We have polymer coatings on the chronograph pushers and a hexagonal polymer shoulder on the crown. You'll see that same shape, the hexagon, in the bolts that are used within the bezel. The bolts are hexagonal and made of steel. The bezel is a rounded octagon. The original Royal Oak, pre-offshore, back in 1972, was inspired by the shape of a vintage diving helmet. Amon, you will get 20 years later, uh, redesigning the watch as a more aggressive sporting reference, created the offshore, but retained many references to the original Royal Oak. The dial is a mega tapisserie, which is a stamped large hobnail that you'll only find on the offshores. Other Royal Oaks have the Grand et the Petite. And then we have these white gold hands and baton style indices. Nothing petite here, as you can see, these are large and generously luminescent surfaces that allow you to see the watch easily in the dark. 
We have a metallic flange outboard that acts as the tachymeter. And if you look at the white varnished second sand of the chronograph, you can use it and the tachymeter to gauge the speed of an object over a kilometer, for example, such as a race car. We have sub-registers that have a concentric texture and a silver white base. And you can see each one is cut into the dial with a polished chaptering around its edge. It's handsomely detailed. There are a few subsidiary setting modes that are enabled by the Audemars Piguet manufacturer caliber 3126 base movement. So we have stop seconds. We also have a quick set date. Now this generation of offshore uses a modular chronograph, which is why you have the base movement below the chronograph. That's why you look so deep into the dial to see the date. It sits on the base movement, which sits below the chronograph. That's also the reason why you can see that the centers of the chronograph pushers are in a slightly different plane than the center of the crown. Inside the case, you're going to have to use your imagination. We have that AP manufacturer base, the 3126. And then on top of that, we have a module AP calls the 3840, which is made by Dubois de Praz. That gives us a vertical clutch chronograph. So it starts without any stagger or jump. That's the nice thing about a vertical clutch. It has no play compared to a lateral clutch. DD out of Lelou is a well-regarded complication specialist that's worked with many high-end brands over the years. You can see the special edition dedication as well as individual numbering on the reverse side. Inside you have that manufacturer movement base which is automatic winding with bi-directional winding action and high efficiency ceramic rotor bearings. It has a 50 to 55 hour power reserve. It beats at six beats per second. And in addition to the stop seconds and the quick set date, it has a robust architecture with a dual anchored full balance bridge for the balance and a free sprung balance architecture to make the movement tough and shock tolerant. All of this because it is a modular movement, basically two movements in one pivots on 59 joules. Reach out to tmaso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.